college football, baby. What a week we had. I mean, there was a lot of blowouts, which I'm not even going to mention in this episode. We did have some barn burners. You learn that's one of my favorite words to use. We had Michigan beat USC in a close game. We had Utah beat Oklahoma State. And we had Missouri go into double overtime with Vanderbilt, which is so crazy. But they pulled out the win in the end. But the game we're going to discuss today, Tennessee rolling into OU. Welcome to the SEC. When the lights were the brightest, college game day there. What the heck happened, OU? We're going to break it all down right now on Lacey's lineup. Let's go. College game day, OU's first SEC matchup of the season entering into their new conference. OU fans showed up. I will give you that. You guys were loud. It was insane. We were prepared from a fan base ready for this game. Josh Heupel's first coming home since he was an, you know, won the national championship for OU. Then he was on the coaching staff. And he did a great job. I think it was an emotional game for him as well. I thought OU fans did a good job welcoming, but then it became business as soon as that kickoff happened. What went wrong right from kickoff? Well, let me start with saying it definitely did not fall on the defense. Our defense was a caliber, caliber defense, ready for the SEC challenge, led by Bowman and Stutzman, They did what they needed to do to win this game. Unfortunately, it fell on the offense, but I got to give praise to my defense before I go into this awful, awful offense. So defense, thank you for all you did. It just didn't hold up because offense couldn't put points on the board. But defense, you did your job. Now, before I start showing you what went wrong in the offense, I do have to kind of side note and say we are very injured right now. It's unfortunate. Our whole offensive line is hurt, and we are out all our star receivers. We are out Anthony. He tore his ACL last year, and he just has not got going. They say that he was active. We didn't see him. I think they just kind of kept him sidelined this game. Gibson, we lost to an ACL injury earlier this season, which is a big hit to us. And the biggest hype tonight was having, or, you know, the night, Saturday night, was having Anderson back into our lineup, a guy that can go make plays. He went out in that first series and was in street clothes before this game even got going. So, unfortunately, we are plagued with injuries. But let's look at this horrible horrible recap of what went wrong and it is all at the hands of unfortunately our quarterback Jackson Arnold. Jackson Arnold didn't look comfortable all night or let's just say for the first half because he didn't play the second half so we'll get to that but let's start with defense does a great job stopping them we have a good run going on we're moving the ball down the floor and watch this video Who is he throwing to? It was underthrown into three defenders, not even throwing the route that the receiver was going. Mess up number one. So you have him throw into crazy receivers, but what does our defense do? Look at this. They stop this turnover drive, and what do they do? They strip the ball and get us inside the 10 in like easy scoring distance. We're all hyped. We think this is our turnaround. And first play, I mean, it is so frustrating, guys. We get this huge defensive turnover, which we said was the reason we would win if defense could turn the ball over for us, which they did. And we can't do it. Look, first play on the offense, and they turn it right back over. Who turns it over? Jackson Arnold. He tries to run the first ball and gets it stripped from him instead of giving it to his running back. And we turn the ball over right back to them. Mess up number two. After that debacle, 
Now you have defense who comes in and still forces a, a punt. They do pin us inside, and what happens? We get a flag, and they move back, and yep, you guessed it. We run a terrible play and cause a safety on us. Safety. Mess up number three. I wish I could say it got better, but it's not even halftime yet, and we do this again. Defense, what do they do? They bell us out again. They cause another turnover. Pressure the quarterback, cause him to fumble, and what do we do? Yes, you guessed it. My favorite Jackson Arnold gets on the line. First play again, and what does he do? Throws this terrible lateral behind ball and causes another fumble mess up number four despite what you saw and all those things you would think that it would be a blowout but defense kept us in this game even though it was how it did how it panned out with all those turnovers we were still in this ball game at halftime 19 to 3 but i'm so happy because brent venables we'd seen enough we were tired of the turnovers, and he decided, actually right before halftime, to bench, bench Jackson Arnold. He was done with him, and we put in a true freshman, Michael Hawkins. So we weren't sure because there was only like 30 seconds left before half, so we were like, is this just a proving point that, hey, you're playing terrible and I can replace you, or were we going to see Jackson Arnold in the second, or second half? Well, it came back out. And Brent Venables had seen enough, fans had seen enough, and Jackson Arnold set his little butt on the bench. True freshman Michael Hawkins enters the game with wide eyes, and you could tell he was a little nervous. His throws were a little off, but he was using his legs, and he was trying to be that spark. And the spark he was. I mean, he scored two touchdowns, more than Jackson Arnold could have ever done. It makes you wonder. I mean, we came back 25-15. We made it a little bit of ex excitement, but it just wasn't enough because of what we had already done. And defense was getting tired. But we did hold them down to the lowest scoring that they had and made them play reserve. But it just caused a quarterback controversy. And it took all of more than two seconds two days, I guess, to name Michael Hawkins the starter going into Auburn week four. four. First road test for OU on the road in Auburn, SEC matchup, and a true freshman, Michael Hawkins, is going to start. We'll see what this drama brings this week, but I'm kind of excited as an OU fan to see Michael Hawkins starting and see what he can do. Makes you wonder what it would have been like if he would have started this game against Tennessee. We'll see what this week brings. Hopefully OU can get it together with their new leader behind the center. Well, thanks for breaking that game down with me. You know I'm an OU fan, and it was just heartbreaking to watch. So I'm glad we were able to discuss it. I'm hoping we're fixing the problems going into this next week because our schedule is only going to get harder. It didn't disappoint except for the disappointment of Jackson Arnold. I respect the kid. I think he just doesn't have what it takes for this SEC conference. But we'll see what this week brings. We'll see a week with Michael Hawkins. And I know we got a lot of big matchups. We're getting into the meat and potatoes of the season. And you got Georgia coming in this weekend. And it's going to be a lot of fun matchup. So I get excited to talk about these games coming up next week with you guys. Until then, I thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I will be back next week to break it all down for you. Until then, your girl is signing off.